Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to another edition of the Word of Truth Outreach Podcast. Has been a little while uh, that we've been in the studio to actually do a podcast, but uh, so many things came up, and one of the things that came up, I had been out of commission a little bit, had pulled a muscle in my back and uh, so on and so forth, and then Barbara, she had an uh, assignment to do in the month of October from her home church, uh, like during the week, doing Bible study and doing the sunny Sunday message. So that kind of sort of kept us out of the studio. And while she was on her mission doing that for our home church, uh, Union Grove Free Will Baptist Church, I was on the mend from that pull muscle in my back. But we are here today to continue on what we started before all of this came about. So, we're not going to wear your patient long. We're going to say what does say the Lord, and then we're going to get right on out of your way. We want to talk briefly about generations. If godly principle, way of life, are to continue on, it got to be a generational thing. Psalms 127 and 3 says, Kids are an inheritance, a gift that God has given to us. So it's up to us to make the best out of our gifts. So it's our place to make sure that the best we have to offer and to provide for our gifts continue down through the years. If we slack our kids with information, if we slack our kids with direction for life, health, and prosperity, and don't pass on the how-to and the what-to, it won't make it to the next generation to come. All the good and the ways that the Lord has provided for us is meant to be passed on from generation to generation. This is why the word tells us to live and to be a certain way that the the way be made and the provisions will go on and on. Amen. Amen. So it is so we got to make sure that our children and our children's children are aware of who it is that we serve the one that make ways, the one that provides, the one that protects, they must know. And most of the time, the only way that they'll truly know is by your testimony and by what you share with them. Amen. One thing uh, I know is I see as important to me is knowing how to cook chicken pastry shouldn't have to be purchased out of a frozen food section from Food Line, Piggly Wiggly, or Hearst Teeter. And these two are things that are generational, things that the people of old, you know they could flat burn, they could flat cook. So these are things that went on that could continue on if we would uh, gave our attention or ask questions, how do you make this and how do you make that? And then sometimes when we end these um uh, what do we call it? The holidays events. We wouldn't uh, miss uh, grandma as much. We wouldn't miss mom as much simply because the food that they provided for us back in the day would be on that table. Uh, a lot of good meals we miss out on today is because the new generation failed to ask questions. As I stated, how to make that special meal that was mouthwatering. I love my mom. God knows I did more than life itself, but I miss most of all the holiday meals that she prepared. And if I could just get some of that sometimes during the holiday seasons, it would kind of make me reminisce back for when we were sitting at mom and dad table and she actually were providing a meal for us on that holiday. Don't get me wrong, though. The meals I eat today is good enough to make me gain weight, make you fat. Come on here. But the meal of old, They wasn't made by shortcuts. Making chicken pastry is an art. So the the best life hop to offer needs to be passed on to make sure the generations to come will be on point. Hey, man, that's right. Because, you know, um, I know a lot of things that I know how to cook today is because I watched my mom do it. And um, I'm grateful for that. Um, My mom is still here and with her her delicious meals that she served when we go visit or during the holidays. I always look forward to them. them. And I'm glad that as a young woman, 
that I sat at um, and watched her, watched her prepare and watched her do uh, some of those delicious meals that we partake in today. And I'm glad I did because I wished I'd have sat with my mother-in-law and um, learned how to cook that awesome chicken pastry. It was like cotton. It melted as soon as it hit your mouth. It was Your mouth was watering, and it was soft as cotton. Uh, but I didn't. But I, I can honestly say that um, I vowed that after she passed that I would pay more attention to what my mother did whenever she was in the kitchen and how she prepared such delicious meals for us. And so, and so it is today. You know, like Kent was saying about the generations, it's important that we, um, we teach our young people, we teach our children and our grandchildren um, how faithful God is and how watchful he is over there, us and loving and kind, and how it is his responsibility. And he takes it seriously to revenge our enemy. But we have all a role to play in this. We must live holy, righteous, and obey his word and what he instructs us to do. And that is a profound way in which our children will know that is how important it is to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, I, I know for myself, generational things are important because, you know, sometimes uh, uh, a guy I work with named Tim Morton, him and I talk about, you know, how that it's hard to find people that are skilled in various uh, areas like uh, electricity or plumbing or, 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 or just building stuff. Or it just in general, it's hard to find someone that is diverse and that that is able to go out and do more than one thing and do that one thing well or more that more than one thing well. These are crafts that that is dying away, and there are not, you know, many that is out there nowadays. The bricklayers and and you just name it, they 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 are dwindling each and every day simply because the crabs are not being being taught. And for some apparent reason, it's just like the church. There are generations that have uh, walked away from the church, and they uh, won't be there to hear what you know. And as she was saying earlier, how you can testify the goodness of the Lord and where he brought you from and where he's about to take you. These are not going forth. So it's kind of um, dying out simply because it's not been passed on. And there are things we just got to do. The Bible lets us know that it's important that the generation of things continue on. Psalms 145 says this. It, it says it just like this. I will exhort thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. The key to this is forever and ever. So if someone from your lineage is going to bless God, like this particular scripture we're saying, someone's going to have to teach them that God is worthy to be blessed by them, by their actions and by their doings. So this got to continue on because it can get to a point and stop and seem like, you know, like now, I mean, the churches used to be a whole lot more fuller than they used to be. But you look at it now, the church is not even nowhere near as full as it used to be. There have been so many branches that have branched off from this one that it ain't even funny. So uh, we got to get it together through, as I stated, the generational things by passing it on. Verse 2 said, Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation, listen at this, shall praise thy work to another. See, this is exactly what we're trying to say. It takes the previous generation to pass on the, 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 the ethics of praise, the, of worship, that it might continue on forever and ever. It's like a domino. When you set up a set of dominoes, you knock one over and it just continue to the last one. And that's what it is when it comes down to the things of God, the, the principles of life, our character, our behavior. All of these things have to be passed on to the next generation. It says one generation shall praise thy work to another. So these things got to be passed on and shall declare thy mighty acts. I would speak of the glorious 
honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. And men shall speak of thy mighty, of thy might and thy turbo acts. And I will declare thy greatness. Verse 7 says, Thou shalt abundantly utter the memory of the, the great goodness and shall sing of thy righteousness. You see, praise has to be taught to continue. Worship has to be taught to continue. The very reason our seeds don't know of the Lord's greatness and his ability to bring us out of any attacks or from that place of not enough to the land of plenty is because we don't pass on to them that he is our source. Amen. Amen. And that's important, Ken, because what our student, what our students, oh, yes, and they are students, right? Because they should be studying us. They should be uh, studying us to the point to know that the God that we serve is real. But what our children and grandchildren and our families should know is that by our testimony and by our acts, they should be able to look on us and say, there is a God. Our testimony to them should be what the Lord of what God has done for us. All the many things that he bought us out of, how he delivered us and how he made a way. And sometimes we keep those stories to ourselves, but we must tell of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for us. We must let them know that that this just didn't just happen. You know, if we if we were healed or, or a miracle was performed, this didn't just happen. We must give glory to God and we must let them know it was through our consecrating ourselves removing ourselves from sin, that God was able to come in and make a way for us. Amen. So many times we don't. We just keep it to ourselves and our children just think, hello, well, well, Gigi did it or mommy did it or daddy did it or opa or peepa did it. But what we got to realize is that we we cannot assume that they will grasp it or that, that, that they will know. We have to sit down and we will have to teach them. And, you know, um, this is something that we must do. We must teach them about how God healed our body. We must proclaim how the goodness of the Lord drew you closer to him. We must inform them of his mercy towards us when we were in a sinful state and God forgave us. We must advise them on living a righteous lifestyle each day, not just on Sunday. We must instruct them on how to be aware of the devil's schemes to trap and overtake them. We must educate them on the importance of prayer, fasting, and reading the word of God. We must update them on how God will reveal himself to them during trying times and tests and show them ways of how to gain the victory. We must more warn them of the dangers of being involved in sin and falling into idolatry. We must advise them to love others as Christ loved us. We must train them in the way that they should go. Be the example of a righteous, sanctified, and holy person. We must teach them how to be a successful prayer warrior. We must cultivate their ears to hear God and his voice. We must charge them to walk with unwise, not to walk with unwise, wicked, or foolish people. We must encourage them to be kind. We must point out to them opportunities to walk upright even when no one else is looking and more so when they are looking. We must warn them that living a hypocritical life is dangerous and displeasing to God. We must recommend that they forgive quick and never labor evil and never label evil in their heart or never, never harbor evil in their heart. We must caution them about being entangled with horoscopes and soothsayers and any advisor that is not of God. We must prepare them to be educated in the word of God through studying it and putting it on the tables of their heart. Philippians 2 and 12 said it best. 
that they needed to work out their own soul salvation with fear and trembling. We must teach this to our children and our children's children's children. So, not just that. You know, Kenny, as I was reading this, I was looking in the book of Deuteronomy 1 through 8. And uh, Moses was trying to tell the children of Israel how important it was, you know, as they go went in to possess the promised land, that um, it goes on to say, I'm going to go ahead and read it real quick. It says, now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the judgments which I teach you to observe, that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers is giving you. You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take from it that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did at Baaporah. For the Lord your God has destroyed from among you all the men who followed Baaporah. But you <coughs> who held fast to the Lord your God are alive today, and every one of you. Surely I have taught you statutes and judgments. Just as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should act according to them in the land which you go to possess. Therefore, be careful to observe them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the people who will hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is wise and an understanding people. For what great nation is there that has God so near to it? as the Lord our God is to us, for whatever reason we may call upon him. And what great nation is there that has such statutes and righteous judgments or as as are in all this law which I set before you this day. So Moses was trying to tell them this. We are ready to go into the promised land, y'all. He wanted them to think about their need for present obedience in spite of, of their past rebellion, okay? As you noticed before, one of Satan's greatest strategies is to make us remember what we should forget and forget what we should remember. If you, if we don't remember our past sins and rebellions against God, we can easily repeat them, fall into the same sinful patterns and topics. Therefore, let him who thinks he stand take heed that he fall. 1 Corinthians 10 and 12. Glory be to God. So Moses goes on, goes on to say, spiritual life and death depends on dependent on Israel's obedience. So does your spiritual life and, and death. You can't afford to believe that all is well and you are not in the right standing with God. You must examine yourself daily and ask for forgiveness of any sin. Israel was about to attack a strong nation, and to push them out of the promised land. If they didn't have the blessing of the Lord upon them, they would soon be in a lot of trouble. In fact, Israel's first military lost in the lost in the fight for the promised land at Ai. Joshua 7 talks about them. They came specifically because they had, they lost specifically because they disobeyed God. 36 men died at Ai because one man in Israel did not obey the command of the Lord. You shall not add to the word. This is what the Lord is saying. This is an important principle regarding God's word. We are able to add, we are not able to add to it in the sense of making the tradition and opinion of men equal to the law of God, nor are we to take away from it by bad teaching or explaining away passages the same ideal is repeated in revelation 22 18 and 22 18 to 19 we must make sure that we don't add or take away from the word of the lord so that when we're teaching it to our children and our children children's we make sure we tell them the whole word of the lord see what happened is that at Papora, Israel sinned by committing both sexual and spiritual immortality with the women of Moab. Moses warned the people of Israel that if they rejected God now as they did back then, the result would be the same. Many would die in the judgment of the Lord. God's intention was that through Israel's obedience to the covenant, he would exalt them among the nation and make them a witness. 
This was so that foreigners like the Queen of Sheba, who visited Solomon at the height of his blessing, would see that the Lord God of Israel was indeed the Lord God. And see, so many times, you know, in life, God bless us. Other people see it. We got to make sure we exemplify or say to them, this is what the Lord has done. I didn't gain this by my might. I, I, the Lord blessed me. I chose to live for him, and therefore he chose to bless me. Glory be to God. So listen, only verse 9 is the main verse I want to get across to you this morning. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligent, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' son. Especially the day thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, whom the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. You must teach your children, your grandchildren, your family, and your friends to hear the Lord. You must teach them. And tell them about all the things God bought you out of. You must let them know that there was a time in your life where you were financially deprived. You were in poverty, but the Lord bought you out. That he made a way. He blessed you with a job. Hallelujah. You must tell them, y'all, that there was times <laughs> that you were sick and God came in and healed your body. You must tell them. You must tell them how God made a way when there didn't seem to be a way. <coughs> so that in their times of testing and trying and being downtrodden, they can say, if God did it for grandma, if God did it for mama or dad, he can do it for me. We must make sure we tell of the goodness of Jesus to our children. So in their day of testing and in their day of being tried, they'll go to Jesus. They won't look to nobody else but they'll run to Jesus, the true and sure foundation. Amen, amen. You know, uh, a lot of what I got out of what she was saying was Moses was telling them to observe. Right. You know, watch and get this. Yes. So that you can pass it on. Observe. Mm. Matthew recorded that Jesus spoke in Matthew 23, verses 1 through 3, uh, when we don't observe, we create an alternate plan. Let me see, can I pull that up right fast and read that for what it says here? But, you know, he was beginning to talk to the, you know, the Pharisees and uh, his disciples on observing. Excuse me just a minute. Now, I'm only, I want to pull this up because I wanted to read it because truly it was very, very, very important. Amen to uh, gather what Jesus was saying. That's Matthew's, the 23rd chapter. Almost there, almost there. And this is it. Uh, what he was trying to say, because truly it's very important to gather everything that has been taught to us and been told to us to continue on to pass it down. But as I stated, when we fail to observe what has been presented to us, we come up with an alternate plan. Therefore, our ways has been incorporated in, into this. And the real way of what we should take have been taken out. But Jesus said, then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore, <clears throat> whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do you, but do ye after their works, for they say, and do not. My so Lord. Jesus is saying, you can't do everything that you see somebody do if it's not lined up with the way that's been made. So you got to make sure that you observe and get all the information that is needed in order to pass it on that's, that we will remain great, even I see. So one of the things I ran across is uh, asking, uh, like, who responsibility is it to make sure that the generation go on and is taught? 
as I stated somewhere along the way, we have altered the plan. God has said, and, and well, I'm going to read this, what, what was said in, in Psalm 78, and then we can see. Most of us has tried to give the chore to uh, the woman of the family, the wife of the family, instead of being the man that God has called us out to be, we have passed the book, matter of speaking. So we have altered the way that God wants us to do it. So who is responsible for teaching the next generation? Let's look at Psalm 78. God commanded fathers to teach their children so that a future generation children yet to be born might know. They are to rise and tell their children. Notice at least three possible four generations are mentioned in these verses. Fathers, their children, their children yet to be born, then their children. Mm, come on here, somebody. Psalm 78, 1 says, Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the word of my mouth. The whole kit and caboodle here, y'all, is, is to understand that anything good, we have to make it generational. We have to continue to pass it on down the pipe to make sure that everything continue on. If you're not really uh, into praising God or worshiping in God, chances are you may not teach your seed. But if Amen. this has been uh, beneficial for you, then it's important to pass it on down the pipe. Right. Because your kids need to be blessed. And God says that our seeds will be blessed. He said, and your children, children. But if you alter the plan that God has governed for us to go by, then they will miss out. He said, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Mm. We will not hide them from our children or their children, showing to the generations to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wondrous work that he has done. So God has charged the fathers to make sure that this carry on. So we can't afford to, you know, just take it for granted. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm tired from work today, so uh, 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 wife, make sure that the kids get this. The, 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 the man have to instill all of the principles inside of the wife if that's so be the case, so that she will give them everything that God has given the man. But God charges us as men to make sure that everything is going forth according to plan. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Get this. So, men, you are responsible for making sure that whatever that child needs, you make sure they get it. Whether it be through you or through your wife. Or through your mate, you got to make sure that they get it. You got to teach this. It's generational. You got to continue to teach this that it might go on down the pipe. Listen at verse 6. That the generations to come might know them. Uh-oh. See what I'm saying? If it continue on, what you were taught from your forefathers, from their forefathers, would continue on down to your children, 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 as we've been saying. Verse 6 again said that generations to come might know them, even the children which should be born. They ain't even born. So we should we should already done have it set up Amen. that they receive this way. Amen. Who shall arise and declare to them to their children. Come on here. That they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. All of this is important. Yes. To make sure that your children know this, that their children should know it, that their children should know it. And then, as it stated, as those that had not even been born will rise up and tell their children. And but Ken, it, I love what you said, Ken, when you said to set their hope mm, in God. Yeah. And not to forget the works. Come and on not here. to forget the yeah. works because God has done some great things. Yeah. And then whenever I see and, and you see that um, I can say for me growing up, when I saw what God was doing or how he blessed my parents, I was thinking, well, surely he'll bless me the same way. 
You know, and, and to me that was that 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 was eye opening for me. Every Sunday, Sunday mornings, we got up, we went to church. You know, and they wanted to make sure I was taught the word of the Lord, and that was important to me, and very mm-hmm. important to them. But it set my hope. Like you said, I love that part. Set my hope in God. And that's what we got to do for the generation to come. Yes, we do. We got to give them hope. So we got to pass on the book as we speak in that they might have hope. And for any man that's locked into God, his ways, his statue, will, will allow the generations to come to know that God is their sole provider. Right, Amen, is the right, word we're saying here. right. And ver- listen to what verse 8 said. And, and, and I'm, I'm going to read 7 because that just sounds so good. That they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Yes. Verse 8 said, and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn Come on and here. rebellious Come generation. On Come on here. A generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. Uh-huh. So God is saying, if you don't really do it the way I want you to do it, you're gonna you're gonna bring the halt to everything that mercy. can bring victory to your seed. Come on, come here. on here, Lord have He mercy. says, so you got to stay in it for the long haul. Mm. Our God and our Lord deserves to be forever recognized and depended upon. This happened when we teach generational lineage. Come on here, somebody. Amen. Got to happen. Why? You might be asking. Psalm seventy eight explains that. Amen. Verse 6 to 7 means to point to the desire outcome of an action so that they might know God through his word. Verse 6, so that they might trust him, put their confidence in him. Yes. Verse 7, so that they would obey him, keep his commandment. And verse 8 states boldly, so that they would not become another stubborn and rebellious generation. My Come Lord, on here. My Lord. Who? are not faithful to God. We teach and pass on what we was taught so that the next generation will know trust and obey God. Amen. This outcome is more than just hoping our kids will stay out of trouble. It should mean we hope to raise faithful followers of Jesus. How do we make sure this continues? Again, Psalm 78 gives us the answer. Testify. Of the things That's it. God has done. That's it. The praiseworthy acts of the Lord. His might and his wonderful work he has performed. Verse 4. Teach what God requires of us. Verse 5. A testimony of the law warned against sinfulness. Verse 8. The prophet Joel went on to say in Joel chapter 1 verse 3. Tell ye your children of it and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. All of this makes it a generational thing. Come on here, somebody. Amen. Amen. Did y'all hear that? It makes it a generational thing. So we that might have not have been in a hurry concerning this and and, and letting our children know and our children's children know or, or reflecting when we come together as a family to let them know of the goodness of the Lord and what he's done, some things you might be ashamed to say. Well, you know, I was in sin and God bought me out. I wasn't doing what's right. But the Lord bought me out. He saved me, gave me a new heart, a new mind, a new direction in life. We need to tell it to our children. We need to boast in the Lord, Ken. Yeah, we do. We need to boast in the Lord so that the humble can hear thereof and be glad. Come on, y'all. You need to go out and tell your children, your family, of what the Lord has done. Because some think you're a holy roller. Some think you're just, just talking. They, they didn't, they, maybe they didn't see you when you were in your bad state. They only see, have seen you in the state that you are now, living a righteous life. You need to let them know what the Lord has done. Give God Amen. the credit that's due unto his holy name of how he brought you out and healed you and delivered you. Give the next generation something real to relate to depend on not an alternate plan amen only what god tells us will work come on here somebody amen so it's a generational thing amen we well we thank you for taking the time out to hear the 
the word uh, being a generational thing. And uh, we just hope and pray that you continue on to pass it on down the line. As we say, pass the buck that your generation, your kids and your kids, kids, kids to come from them will actually believe that God is uh, just mighty. He is the source. He is everything that we need in order to survive. As I stated, that he can bring you from the land of not enough to the land of plenty if you will trust him and just do everything that he asks you to do. Amen. This has been another Word of Truth Outreach podcast we your host, the leads, Kent and Barbara, and we are thankful that God chose us in such a time as this to rightly divide the word of truth, and hopefully we'll be back on track. I think Barbara has like one more week of uh, being the host speaker for the month of October, and then we will be back regularly on the Word of Truth Outreach podcast. So we thank you for your patience. Hang in there. We have not jumped ship. We are just on another assignment, but truly, uh, we will try to get back in here and uh, keep you a speed to the things that God will have you to be into. Again, thank you for tuning in, and we out. Be blessed. Have a blessed Sunday.